Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and I'm going to do an unboxing on Wild Blueberry Syrup. This is a cannabis product that I bought at Zenleaf in St. Charles. So without diving too deep into this, I wanted to make it quick because it is my bedtime. I think that a lot of us are underslept. We learned in college or after high school to just shortcut sleep because we can power through the next day with coffee, stimulants, eating, or a nap and then get through it. But there are data points that show cancer recurrence is higher in people that don't sleep as well as they should. In addition, people fall asleep at the wheel and people misinterpret sleepiness as hunger. Instead of going to sleep at a reasonable hour, they'll eat. And sometimes the misinterpretation gets you to the point where you have a snack every night. In human tradition, it's supposed to be from about 8 to 9 p.m., nothing until about 6 to 7 a.m., and that gives you at least a nine-hour fasting window. We take advantage of too many sugary foods that actually taste really good and give you that dopamine reward. Those same foods also inspire you to hunt for more of those sugary foods later in a short amount of time. I think the name of the game now is that food can trigger hormone response. I'll summarize that with two points. First, food and beverage can instill a hormonal change. And if you're not ready for it, some of those hormones can cause disease downstream. Number two, sleep, when it's underestimated, can cause a world of damage. I think in the ideal setting, we're supposed to be working, playing for about 16 hours and then sleeping and restoring for about eight. And there's people that fall above and below that. And sometimes when you get to a certain age, like 50 or 60, you can be very used to waking up several times a night and just either peeing or rolling over because somebody else is snoring. And here's the thing, even if you go back to sleep within 30 seconds, you still have to come out of deep sleep. So the brain can't go straight into sleep. Those of you who say you knock out immediately, that's probably because you're exhausted but that does not mean that the brain turns off so it has to go from full beta wave into a slower wave slower wave even a slower wave and then REM rapid eye movement and then it pops back up and then goes through its stages again so it does that about seven times a night sometimes more unfortunately as you get older we have more worries that occur we have more reasons to get up whether it's women with hot flashes or men with big prostates parents that co-sleep with their kids or pet owners that co-sleep with their aging dogs and cats. It is very rare to have a good night's sleep. I'm a grandfather now, so when I watch my grandson sleeping, it's like, oh man, I wish I could sleep that deeply. I have to use this eye mask and these earplugs and then quiet down, turn the temperature down, make sure I don't eat too late at night so it turns on my reflux, pee before I go to sleep. There's just so much of a ritual just to pray that I get a good night's sleep. And the reason you need a good night's sleep is that during those seven cycles, there's a little fragment of time that allows your brain to fix itself. Brain tissue has little cells that go around cleaning up debris. The deeper you sleep with more frequent episodes of restorative sleep, the better those cells go around to fight and take care of inflammation. Imagine if you had a cleaning crew that cleans the town's streets overnight so that when you wake up in the morning, you drive in its beautiful streets. But if your crew goes on strike, you wake up and there's trash everywhere, there's garbage, there's obstruction, everything gets slowed down. Same thing with the human brain. If you get poor sleep or fragmented sleep or no sleep at all, and sometimes what happens is your memory starts to fade. Worst case scenario is precancers start to grow into cancers. And I've had other videos that I'll put links down below on things you can use like L-theanine, melatonin. But for the purposes of tonight, I started experimenting a long time ago when the cultivators had a lot of products, but there seems to be limited products nowadays. I'm not sure if this is still out, but this was pretty decent. It was pre-mixed, so you can't really divide it, but you'd have to take enough of it to fine tune your sleep. So it just takes a little bit of experimentation. I'd probably do about a shot every night for a couple of nights, see how it helps. Increase the shot every three nights until you get to the point where you sleep deep, but you don't wake up groggy. When this came out, it was great because it was a lot easier to make my own proportions when I used my Pellegrino and this together versus relying on the pre-mixed ratios of this. The only problem, I'm not sure you can see this, but there's sugar in here. And I don't like sugars at night just because of the same thing I told you. I'm trying to avoid insulin resistance and I don't want the last signal to my metabolism at night to be sugar. 
It did work well though, and I was able to dial it in. Then this came out squeezed, and this stuff is great. The only problem with squeeze is that it was so hard to open that I think the company stopped making it, and I can't find it anymore. But there's no sugar in here and very limited carbohydrate. So RIP squeeze, but this was a good product. So let me show you how I'll do this. And I essentially, the only problem with syrup is that it's really sticky and I'm not good with the proportions of this. What I would do would be a trial every three days of going low and slow. I'll put approximately a milliliter in here. Then I'll mix it in with my Pellegrino, but not too much. And this is the problem. If you try to dilute this too much, then you'll have a belly full of fluid. And that fluid has to go somewhere, so it might make you pee middle of the night. So try to limit the amount you use. Which brings me to my final reason for trying this. Some of my patients will try to get better sleep at night, especially when there's anxiousness and the brain doesn't turn off, with alcohol. And alcohol does work to calm, but but unfortunately, alcohol does tax the liver. And if your liver is healthy, it'll work to deacetylate and take care of it. But usually by the time you have one drink of alcohol at about 9 or 10 p.m., your bladder will get full at about 2 or 3 a.m., thus making you wake up. And then in most alcohols, beers or wines, you have a high hit of carbohydrate and sugar. Then after a while, you could put yourself into alcoholic fatty liver disease. So the psychological impact of having carbonated water and something that works to calm you down would almost be a substitute for alcohol. If some of you are having a hard time moving away from it, if you think about it, two to three beers or two to three glasses of wine would be about an extra meal per day. And if you're overweight or trying to cut down your total calories per day and try to take care of not too many carbs, then those two to three beers are just not going to help you. So here it goes. There is a hint of blueberry flavor, uh, pretty decent, not too sugary, and it mixed well, so you can see how much I used. I only used about one to maybe three milliliters at most, but I have to work tomorrow, so I don't want to wake up too groggy. So I'll finish this off, and I'll continue this tomorrow morning as I wake up to let you know how it worked. Remember, though, if you're going to be doing your own trial, three days, same amount, and if it doesn't do anything, then you go a little higher for the next three days. Or if you do wake up totally high, then cut back to half of the volume for the next three days. What we're searching for is deep sleep, that's restorative, waking up refreshed, and not feeling high in the morning. Good night. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick again. So the blueberry syrup uh, last night was okay. The amount that I used in my shot did help a little bit with regards to getting to sleep but it did not keep me asleep. And I have to admit, I had two variables that I'm going through right now, so this trial has a bit of error in it. Now, anybody that's a patient of mine, if you're not a patient of mine, please think about joining on my Herbal 411 website, new patient consult, or cannabis certification. That's why I would always suggest if you have any doctors that can help you, use them as your sounding board. And syrup also has two new products, chocolate and vanilla, but because it's called cafe, I don't think these are for nighttime. And I'm not quite sure how this is supposed to help you unless you have anxiety or arthritis and it's that severe by putting it in your coffee. But if you do need that for morning, you should probably talk to me about other products that will help you in the long run without risking getting you high. Because there is a fine line, especially as you get older, between getting comfort and inflammation controlled and also getting high and overdosed. Not to mention that CBD in high doses can also increase your liver function tests. As medicines for cholesterol, blood thinning, or antibiotics can have a compounded effect and then be hard to predict. So hopefully this gives you another option as far as getting better sleep and maybe a way to curtail the sugar and carbohydrates of your alcohol and just put it in for the celebratory times on the weekend. Bottom line is that there's a time and place for everything and we really have to be mindful of our exercise, our sleep, and our nutrition. And I think medical cannabis is a great thing to use as part of your supplements for the day. Please consider giving this a thumbs up if you found this helpful and share this with other people who also have problems with either alcohol or difficulty with sleep. Don't forget to consider subscribing and I'll see you at the next video.